So some people can think vectors are quite fiddly to work with, really because there's so many different ways of writing them down, which doesn't really help the matter. But the way and the reason why there's so many different ways of writing them down is because they are so versatile okay, and so useful. So if this was my vector, for example, and it was traveling uh, from one point here, so let's call that point A, and I'm going up to this point, and this point is B, then one way of writing down this vector is to say that I'm traveling from A to B, and I put a little arrow above the two letters, showing direction. It's not enough to just write down AB. It needs to have the arrow there to identify some direction. Otherwise, it's just uh, a chord, okay, a chord length. So that's one way. Other ways of doing it? Well, we could identify this using um, a vector uh, just given by a letter. So we could give this the letter A, but I can't just write it as A by itself, just as a lowercase letter, okay? I need to have some semblance because that would be that would be deemed as a scalar quantity, just a number, okay, an amount. It doesn't have any direction attached to it. So in order to make sure that we deem this and is identified as a vector, we can underline it. Okay, so we can underline the A. Now, the reason why in, uh, when we're writing vectors down that we underline them is because uh, we cannot write in bold. In books, they will write this in bold, okay? But for us mere mortals, okay, writing in bold is quite uh, a challenging thing to do, especially if we've got lots of vectors going on. So we avoid that by drawing in a underline, okay? So all of these three things could mean the same thing. Now we don't just represent uh, vectors just by letters like that, okay? We can identify them by um, their actual kind of size going in one direction and another. So for example, if this vector uh, was traveling, uh, let's say, five along and then two up, okay, then there are a multitude of different ways that I could represent that vector. One way is to write the vector as a column vector. So a column vector can be written as five along and two up. Okay. Now, you can write that using curved brackets, or you can write that using square brackets. It doesn't matter which you use. Okay. Some examples will stick to a particular notation. Uh, some will stick to that one. Um, some may use that one. Okay. I invariably end up using this one, but... As, as I said, it doesn't matter which one you end up using. That's one way of writing down uh, a vector. Another way of writing it down is to describe it as kind of like what I've done here, is describing it as five lots of going along to the right and two lots of going up. Okay, So the way that we do that is by writing it in what we refer to as component form. And component form, it would write like this. So five along, and we say, we use the I vector, and I'll show you what I represents in a moment, to represent uh, moving along in the X direction, plus two up. And we use J to represent moving in the vertical direction. Now, the I and J, as you can see, I've underlined them, so they are vectors. They themselves are referred to as unit vectors or base vectors and have length 1. So I, in two dimensions, 
is 1, 0, and j is 0, 1. OK, so really what you've got here is five lots of 1, 0, plus two lots of 0, 1. And so really what you've got is 5, 0, plus 0, 2, which gets you 5, 2. So these two things are equivalent. Now, we also look at vectors as um, describing them in magnitude direction form as well. And we'll be looking at that in the coming videos. But this is kind of giving you a brief overview of how we write vectors down, uh, not just in letter form, but also in either column vector or component form.